Hey hey, welcome to Half the Battle. Today we'll be taking a look at Backstop, the G.I. Joe Persuader Driver. Released in 1987 with all original body parts, Backstop is an interesting figure to say the least. At first, I was gonna complain about his body armor, which is restricted to his upper torso and shoulders. It seemed, let us say, lacking. Since, well, it doesn't protect three quarters of his body. But then the obvious thing hit me. It makes perfect sense, since that's the only part of his body that's exposed when he's in his vehicle. So it's actually a pretty cool detail. Oh, and his head is protected by his helmet, which also looks pretty nice, but it has a big hole where his face is. Honestly, it's best to just use your imagination and pretend that he has a clear bulletproof visor. That's what I did when I was a kid anyway. In fact, way back then when I was a kid, I put a piece of tape over the helmet so we'd have a visor. The toy I'm showing you is actually my original one from childhood, so I had to take some time to clean the tape off. Yeah, my quote-unquote improvement had remained on it since childhood. Overall, this is a pretty nice figure, and, and, yeah, okay, I can't ignore this any longer. You'll notice I've only been showing you this guy from the waist up. Yeah, there's a reason for that. What the hell is up with his pants? Who the hell thought bright yellow pants were a good idea? I don't just mean in general, I mean with the other colors on this figure. Ugh. Yeah, it's really off-putting, so I'd suggest just sticking him in this vehicle and keeping him there. The only other thing that's really wrong with this figure is the paint on his red parts, as well as the paint on his hair. It tends to rub off, and this is made worse on his head because of the helmet, of course. And now we come to the vehicle, the Persuader. Okay, yeah, um, what's the polite way to say this? It sure is phallic, isn't it? Yeah, I wonder if Backstop is compensating for something. Anyway, the gun is supposed to be a Heatwave 10 megawatt armor-piercing laser cannon. That's why it's not a traditional looking artillery barrel. For some reason, it also has a mini-me gun underneath it, as well as six missiles, three on each side. I like the design well enough. It fits with what a futuristic high-speed tank could look like. And the bumper on the front actually moves to absorb shocks. That's a nice little touch. You know, now that I think about it, given the futuristic look of both Backstop and this vehicle, I can't help but think that this toy was originally meant to be a part of Battle Force 2000, the sub-team that came out the same year. Oh, and just as an aside, Backstop's body mold was later used to create one of the members of Sky Patrol, namely Static Line. And if you look at this figure, the helmet he is wearing is actually a pretty nice substitute for the original one. And this one has a visor! The Persuader itself was re-released as part of a Toys R Us exclusive line known as Night Force. It featured a number of recolored figures and vehicles whose gimmick was they were put together to strike under the cover of darkness. The color schemes of the figures were very appropriate and they looked really nice. The vehicles on the other hand... Uh, yeah, I know I can bitch endlessly about Neon Orange, but it's really justified here. It's a vehicle specifically repainted to launch surprise attacks under the cover of darkness! It should not have bloody neon orange as its color scheme! So, anyway, now we come to the file card. And we've got something unique here. You see, Backstop is Canadian! He hails from Montreal, Quebec, making him the only Canadian member of the Joe team and one of the only foreigners. Or at least, somebody who was born in a foreign country. That's only if you go by the American file cards. In Europe, things get a bit more international. I'll just give you two examples from the file cards I had as a child. Dial Tone is from Italy. And Cutter is Dutch! Anyway, a Canadian. Let's see what the file cards are booty. Well, 
First of all, let's see how many lines of the file card I can get through before we hit a stereotype. The first line of the file card states Backstop has injured so many other players in his junior hockey team. Yep, one line is all it took, because every Canadian plays hockey, right? Also, I've been trying to find out what a backstop is supposed to be anyway. Now, it's either a construction to keep balls in ball games from leaving the field, or it's akin to a goalie in these ball games, like say a catcher in baseball. I can only find one reference to a backstop being a term for a hockey goalie, but, well, there could be a connection there. Moving on, this guy... Uh, this guy is a jerk. In fact, his parents had to move out of Canada to escape other angry parents because Backstop had injured so many of them. Uh, let me just say that again. He had to flee the damn country because he was too rough for ice hockey. Ice hockey! A sport that was created by inventing a game around people beating the crap out of each other. Once his family had fled to the States, his disposition didn't improve much, as he was kicked out of boxing and he was his high school's wrestling champion for two years straight because nobody was stupid enough to get on the mat with him. Dude, you have issues! So finally he somehow ended up on the Joe team. The card doesn't specify how, but at least it's an elite military unit and not, you know, prison. Or an insane asylum. Backstop nor the Persuader featured in the cartoons. The Persuader did get a tiny bit of animation in its toy commercial, which it shared with the Cobra Maggot. His first appearance in the comic was in issue 64, though it wasn't much of a first appearance. I mean, just look at the first panel he appears in. The Persuader is in the background and Backstop has just the top of his head visible. But let's not be too hasty. He can still make an impression, right? Let's see the next panel that he's in. Couldn't find him? Let me help you there. Yep, that's right. Just a shadow in the background. You can really tell the amount of love and care they poured into his character for this issue. And those are his only two appearances in the issue. Backstop does show up later in issue 68, where the Persuader and the top of his head again are even featured on the cover. This story introduces us to Battle Force 2000, if you'll remember. Another reason I think that the Persuader toy was originally supposed to be part of that team. In the issue, the Persuader, along with two other vehicles, get dropped out of an airplane and have a running battle with Cobra. We do get to see Backstop face this time, and he even has some lines, but he's not really given a personality. Given his personality of the file card, though, that's probably a good thing. The Persuader does get to show off its laser cannon, which is pretty cool. Though, it seems to fire in three directions at once for some reason. Yeah, to be honest, Backstop seems to be one of those vehicle drivers that gets shoved into the background in favor of the vehicle he drives. This can happen pretty frequently in both the comic and the cartoon. Fortunately, some figures escape this, like for example Ace and Covergirl. So here's my conclusion. The figure itself is fine, at least from the waist up, and I really like the specialized body armor. The character seems pretty non-existent outside of the file card. And inside of it, he's a bully and a jerk. And Canadian. Not that those things are connected, but really this guy seems like the Canadian Jason Voorhees. The vehicle is a nice one with some nice play value. It's functional, futuristic, and fun. Well, that's all for me. See you next week, everybody.